I'd like to introduce you to the improved phase of DMAIC. What we're going to talk about now is how do we actually create solutions and demonstrate the solutions are effective, in other words they have a causal relationship that will make the control of the problem possible. So the DMAIC step conducts experiments or pilot tests to find the best operational envelope for performance of the process. It begins with this hypothesis of a root cause and ends with an improvement plan. The kinds of questions that we're going to address in here are which factors affect performance, which ones manage the variation, which factors will shift the average, which ones will help you understand the operating envelope where we want to define the performance range. What happens outside of that range? How can we control those factors? How are we going to manage the process and how will this actually work in the real world? So a number of tools will you be using. We'll talk about prioritization matrix, a Kaizen process blitz, a process laboratory or pilot experiment, process benchmarking, experimental analysis, the general electric decision workout, as well as improvement plans. Now, we want to determine that this change is indeed significant. Not that it's just something that is operating by theory O, but we need to test the conditions of performance to determine if the after change effect is actually solving the problem that we were observing in the performance baseline that we prepared during the measure phase. So what we're going to do is use the original process performance data and conduct something like a two sample t-test at the end of this analysis to see if the change is truly sufficient and significant from a statistical perspective. We could use other tools to do this in the two sample t-test, but for instance, we could use the uh, individual's chart with before and after as two different stages. And then we would clearly see the process shift occurring using the control chart and the control chart limits. So what we want to do now is, is discuss some of the alternatives we have in terms of how to make this improvement happen. Now, there's going to be some differences here between what the green belt and the black belt do. The green belt level processes, remember, are within an individual process. So they don't tend to be as cross-functional or cross-process, but they'll be within a particular work subgroup most of the time. As a result, the number of tools and the types of tools you have to use are not as actually complex as what happens in the black belt project. So in the measure phase, we'll see very similar types of requirements between green belt and black belt. In the analyze phase, we see also similar requirements but the black belt spends more time on analysis. Here in the improved phase, what we'll see is black belts will have to do much more detailed types of experimentation and analysis to be able to understand the multi-factor components, as well as to understand cross-functional or cross-organizational or cross-equipment components. However, since we're dealing with the green belts, this simplifies things greatly. So let's begin, and we'll start talking about the first of these improvement approaches.